Hello students, welcome to the channel. Today we'll solve live the writing section of the October 2020 PSAT. Let's begin. <clears throat> Passage one, texting to keep a language alive. According to a recent survey, the traditional language of the Saanich, a First Nations indigenous community with roots on Canada's Vancouver Island has fewer than 20 fluent speakers. Right, so here um, I need to have a comma after Sanich or Sanic um, because the fact that they are the First Nations Indigenous community with roots on Canada's Vancouver Island, that's additional information in the sentence. So when you have an additional piece of information, you put commas before and after it. So here the right answer would be B. Okay. Um, the traditional language of the Sanic or Sanich um, has fewer than 20 fluent speakers, all of them over the age of 60. Um, so here, um, right, so I would need to put a comma after speakers because when I say all of them over the age of 60, that's a dependent clause, right? Um, rather, it's not even a clause because it doesn't have a verb. It's rather an expression, a statement, an incomplete sentence, right? So I would need to put a comma there. I can't have a semicolon because a semicolon would be required between two independent sentences and all of them over the age of 60 is not independent. If I were to say all of whom, then I would need to introduce a verb, all of whom are over the age of 60. Right? And that verb is absent. So the right answer is D. Uh, those numbers suggest a language at risk of being lost forever, at risk of something, right? This is idiomatic usage. The word or the expression at risk takes the preposition of a language at risk of something, right? A language at risk of being lost forever. So that's B. Because the cultural identity and memory of a group of people are so closely bound to language, members of the Sanic community worry that such a loss would be disastrous. By contrast, members of the Sanic community are working to revive their language by expanding its speaker base and are doing so in an unexpected manner via text messaging. So now you need to use a connector here and the connector will join two sentences. The first sentence talks about the, the loss of language of the community and how that would be a disaster. And the second sentence talks about them trying to revive the language. So there is a clear uh, cause effect sort of relationship that, you know, because this is a, a language that's dying, they are trying to work to revive it. So the best answer would be C as a result. As a result of the loss happening, the community is trying to revive the language. It's not a contrast, so you can't say by contrast. The second statement is not an example of the first statement, so you can't say for instance. And it's not an additional piece of information. It is directly related to the previous sentence, it follows from the previous sentence. So C is the answer. Until the 1970s, the language of the Sanic was strictly oral, but in that decade, a Sanic man named Dave Elliott embarked on a project of capturing as much of it as he could in written form through writing. So this seems to be a redundancy question because when you say in written form, that means through writing, right? So in writing, uh, by taking down the language by hand. So all of those uh, option C, option D are redundant. The simplest answer which conveys that it is going to be in written form is option D. Okay, because numerous letters from the A to Z Roman alphabet are required to reproduce phonetically the language's complex sounds resulting in exceedingly lengthy words, Eliot decided to create his own Sanic alphabet. 
So now you're seeing languages, complex sounds, right? So obviously it's one language. So, uh, and it's possessive. So language apostrophe S is correct. And sounds is not possessive. So it's just correct the way it is, option A. Um, unlike the Roman alphabet, Eliot's new alphabet utilized only one letter to denote each sound. Eliot's work made it possible to teach the language written as Senkoton in a classroom and to preserve it in dictionaries. Okay, now the Sanic includes Sankotan in the local school curriculum, which choice introduces the main topic. Okay, texting has been criticized as a form of communication that weakens language by allowing uh, abbreviations and non-standard usage, yet first voices chat smartphone app used by Sankotan texters um, actually strengthens the language by enabling and encouraging its use to spread beyond those few aging speakers. The app, which was created by First People's Cultural Council, an organization working to revitalize indigenous culture, allows users to download keyboards tailored to different indigenous languages, including Senkotan. So we are talking about the introduction of the language Senkotan in texting, right? So now the Sanic um, can use Senkotan to text, right? Because uh, that is the whole point of this paragraph, right? It's not about uh, second language speakers or uh, local school curriculum. And it's not about revitalizing the language because that is something that's already said earlier, right? The focus of this paragraph is the use of texting to spread Senkotan. So C is the best answer. Um, which choice is most consistent with the way texting is characterized in the sentence? So yes, it has been criticized as a form of communication that weakens language. So option A is the best answer. Evaluated and analyzed don't really have the sense of uh, criticism uh, that we need in the sentence. And reprimanded is contextually wrong because to reprimand is to scold someone and you can't really scold the language or rather you can't really scold texting. Okay, um, now for the question number nine, we are saying first voices chat, a smartphone app used by Senkotan texters actually strengthens the language by enabling and encouraging its use to spread. So I'm saying, uh, I use a pronoun its for the noun language. And that is the correct pronoun, right? I can't say his, once, or there. So the language is used. So nine is just no change. Okay. Um, first voices chat has made great strides since Elliot's initial work by facilitating the language's movement out of classrooms and dictionaries and introducing the ability to type different characters. Most importantly, the texting app puts Senkotan in the hands of younger generations. Children and teens are widely recognized as the most frequent of texters, uh, but they are also a group crucial to preserving the language. Young people, the linguist Gregory Anderson explains, are the key stakeholders and the ones who may or may not pass it down <clears throat> to their own children. <clears throat> As the Sanic and especially the youth text in Senkotan then, they're changing how older members of the community view texting. Okay, so we have two expression of ideas question. Which choice most effectively supports the point made earlier in the sentence that it has taken the language uh, outside the classroom and dictionaries and into the everyday life of Sanic communities, right? Option D, because that is how uh, testing has facilitated the use in day-to-day -day speaking and language use. So I'll go with D for question 10. Um, the ability to type different characters is not relevant in context. Um, and the fact that other languages have undergone this process, that is not the focus here. The focus is that it has become popular. It is being used by the young, the younger generation. And the recognition of 
uh, the language decline is something that has already been covered. Okay, and then the writer wants a conclusion that restates the main idea of the passage as the Sanic and especially their youth text in Senkoti and then they are changing how older members view texting. That's not the main idea. They are becoming less reliant on traditional dictionaries and courses for language learning. That's not the point. It's not about learning the language. It's about preserving a dying language. The, the number of text sent in Senkoton has increased significantly. That, that is true. That is an important uh, milestone, but that's not the main idea. They are taking an important step towards ensuring the continued vitality of their traditional language. This is the main idea. The idea that they are trying to preserve the language, that they are ensuring that the language does not die. Okay, so that was the first passage of the writing section. Let's quickly grade this before we go to uh, the next one. I'm just going to keep it till here. Uh, B, D, B, C, B, B, D, B, C, B. A C W A D D A C W A D D. Great. So we got all correct. Um, I think we we'll close the video here, and we'll do all the four passages in four separate videos. That will make it easier for you to track your progress. So come back later in the in another video, and we'll look at the second, third, and fourth passages of this section. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Take care.